Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can upload the images from your .NET Core 8 web API to the Azure Storage account. And we'll be using Azure Storage SDK for .NET Core and then we will do this as our part of our e-commerce web application. This is also a part of the Azure AZ204 certification, meaning this is how you will learn how you can use the SDK package to upload the blobs to the Azure storage account. So without delay, come let's get started. So this is the API that we are talking about and we have already seen this. If you want to see where this code is all, go to my repository, this github.com slash learn smart coding. Under that, go to repository and you can see something called e-commerce app for products you will find all the codes that I'm going to show you now inside this repository. So do not waste time in checking the code. So go along with me in the video or if pause and do it side by side, but you have the complete code, working codes, so you don't need to worry about it. So the first thing, let's recap. So in the previous video, we saw the Azure storage account creation in the Azure portal. So this is the storage account that I'm talking about. We saw this learn smart coding is the storage account and we have no containers here. We just did a demo for the upload containers and some existing log. So this is a blob level and this is a private level, right? So given this situation, let's see what we have to do to upload the image. It should be fairly easy. So all what you have to do is, so let's go one by one, right? So in this API, what I've done is there is something called Azure Blob Storage, a section like this. And under that, there's something called connection string. Here I have named as you have to put your connection string here. We'll talk about this connection string in a moment, but let's go through the code first. So we have something called the product controller. And in the product controller, we have the product creation. So this is the endpoint, right? So in this endpoint, basically what we are doing we are getting a list of images for a given product when you try to create a product. Now this code will check the product and then it will try to upload one by one. So the piece of code that is interested as part of this video is all about here. So let's me walk you through. So this will have the model as well as the images that goes for the given product. Okay. So we are checking the product images within a given uh, file extension like a PNG or a JPG file or something. If not, we just ignore the request. Now let's imagine everything is good. We loop over all the images that's coming in and we're trying to create a file name for each one. So the first one will come. I'm going to put a breakpoint here and we will do a live demo. So we're going to come here, create a file name and we're going to open the stream and have a container name. So I'm going to use the container name products. If there is a product container already, fair enough. If not, it will create for us. And I wanted to put a folder called images inside the container called products. And then followed by, I need to upload the image. So when we upload the image, we also name it as category ID underscore the product name that's coming up. Okay, so that's how it will come. So what we are going to do is, we are going to try to upload to a repository. I mean, we are going to try to upload this image, the incoming image to the Azure blob storage. So what do we want in order to upload? First thing that you need to do is you have to go to the um, package manager console and then you need to install a package. There is a package called, all right, there is a package called Azure storage blob. You search for this Azure storage blob, but pay attention because we are going to deal with the servers in the servers layer, I have actually right clicked on the servers, go to manage NuGet package. And if you search with this, you'll be able to install this package under the service. We are not installing under the web, we are installing under the service. Okay. Reason because we have a service called storage service and I have a method called upload image. What it takes is, is a stream, a container name, folder name and a file name. So how is this implementation is? So implementation as follows like this, right? So we have something called a blob service client. Blob service client will come under this namespace. That's the one Azure storage blob. Now that needs a connection string. So where is this connection string coming? 
We are injecting the connection string when we are creating an instance of this Azure storage. But generally speaking, how do you inject this? We need to configure it. So we will see take. So how do you inject this? We need to configure this. We will take a look at that in a moment. But imagine the connection string is injected here. So we put the connection string and we create an instance of Azure Blob Client. After we create, we pass the container name to see the get blob client container. Okay, so and then what happens? We create an instance of that container client and then we try to create. We call a method called create if not exists. If this container name doesn't exist for a given um, Azure storage account, it will create. If it do exist, it won't create. After that, we create a blob name followed by the folder name and the file name. Once we have it, what do we do? We will use the container client instance and call another method called get blob client pass the blob name. We, we find the reference of this blob client and then we will use this reference and use an upload method by passing the image stream and set as true. So what is the second one? The second one is all about overriding. So if you set true, if the image is there, it will override. If you set false, if the image with the same name is there, it won't override. Instead, it will start throwing you error. So I'm going to override the image. That's why this true is here. After that, we get the URL and then we pass it. Okay, let's say you take this code. Okay, if this doesn't work, I will tell you what will happen. Now, in order for this to work, we need to talk about the connection string. So where is this connection string coming? Let me expand this. Go over this development uh, JSON because I'm working from development when you are when the application is load it works from the local right so we put the connection string here from where do we put the connection string let's go to the portal let's go to the left side and then come all the way through security and networking under that there's something called access key now this is the place you get the connection string there are two keys okay by default they'll give you two keys and then you can use any one of the key if the keys are old enough, there's something called rotation reminder. You can rotate the key, meaning periodically changing the key, which administrator will generally do. That's why we don't hard code this key in the application. Instead, these keys are uh, eventually configured in the Azure Key Vault or in the web app configuration. But this is for demo purpose. Let's take this connection string, come over to the application take this replace it. So I'm going to copy paste this key. This key will generally have the account name, ID and all of those things. So I save it and then I'm going to run it. But before I run it, there is something called configuration, right? The Azure storage service here, the storage service, we need to configure it. Generally, any service that you use, we need to configure as a service here. If you come to this builder in the, in the program.cs, there's something called builder.service.com you used to use something called add transient or add scoped right now what we are going to do is for this uh, azure storage servers we will say builder.service.add scoped this is the interface this is the implementation class but we also tell where to get the connection string basically what we are doing here is we have a class called Azure Blob Storage Configuration. This one is exactly the same name as um, the, the connection string. So for example, the connection string is properties there. So if you look at here, there's something called a connection string property. Okay. So we're going to map this with this. How do we map it? We go here. So what do we do is first we will configure the service. We are saying this is the output of the class name where you take the section called Azure Blob Storage. So go to the configuration section, take this section and map it to this. Once we have this mapping done here, this is called binding. Once we have it here, we are using the I option to take the connection string value here and then pass it to the instance as a connection string in the constructor. Now, why are we doing all of these things? See, we generally don't need to do this, let's say, if you don't have this um, connection string over here, you can inject I configuration here and read the connection string from there. It's absolutely going to work. But 
in my video i wanted to show you different options that you can use you can configure in a different different ways so that's why we are using this option so this option don't need to confuse you can use i configuration over there or we are defining here itself where to take the configuration and how to inject it so generally what happens the uh, .NET core uh, tries to the di right the dependency injection tries to create an instance of uh, your storage service whenever this i storage service is invoked at that time when it is invoking it will also pass the connection string and create an instance and give back the instance that's what it's going to happen okay i'm going to i'm going to um, put a breakpoint here and what happens now let's go to product controller so then it creates and finally gets the path and then we insert the path that's it let's say when you open this you don't have the connection string you don't have anything configured this will fail and when it fails we have a try catch here intensely put the try catch here this try catch will return an empty string and we know that it has failed here and then we upload this to the local file local means I'm trying to upload this to the local lo your uh, computer itself where the application is running. So you can use this or you can use this. All right, let's run this application. So this is what we get in the Swagger. So if you open this uh, product create, right? So we have these things. It's showing up like this in the Swagger because it's a content type is multi-form data. So what we are going to do is we are going to use the Postman instead. So I go to postman create a new request and you can see the this is the this is the new one so you put this url this is the url that we have it in our swagger it's running in local and then it's a post and go to body so go to body and put these key value pairs so from where this key value pair is coming so let's go to create product i mean the add product you see this um this is the update one that i'm showing up but for add also it's a multi-part form data Okay, so it has to be in a key value pair and we have to choose the right content type. So let's go to this add. So even add is the same thing. That's why we decorate this as consumes multipart slash form data. All right, now here, what are we going to do? We put all of these things, go to the body, choose form data and not, not the uh, raw or all of these things. Say right? this is the one that you used to choose earlier, but in this case alone, it's a form data. So, and then you put this key value pair. So all these keys are nothing but the property of the create product. So we have product name, price, um, you know, the quantity and all of those stuff. And it's coming from this model. So you see this, it also has images, a list of iform file. And it has all of these properties. So basically these properties are here. And I showed you images is the one which is iform file. That's where we send the file in the request. So let's add some new product. I'm going to name it as the new laptop and then some random price, some quantity here. Choose the images here and then click here and choose text or file. So choose file. Okay. After you choose file, you'll have something called select files and simply select the image that you wanted to upload. Okay. So in this case, we are supporting only one, but uh, basically you can send more than one. And remember the header should be a content type of data should be multi-part slash form data this is important for this api to work see the moment i do it it's actually going inside and storage service got the connection string right so this is the one which we invoked and here we automatically got the connection string and that is getting assigned to the local property called underscore connection string okay so we run through it this is how the instance will be created now only it is coming to the controller so once it comes to the controller we format we go through all the images and see whether it is having a valid file format everything looks good there is one image we got right so these uh, validations are good so now here we create a file name file path we open the file and then read the content as a stream and then send this to the upload image async method in the storage service see now it just creates the container if it is not then it combines all of these things finally it uploads and give us the final image url so if you click on this url um so let's go to the container and see where it is there see it's inside the product inside the images this data is coming right so this url and the url that we saw is same so but if i copy paste what will happen 
right so i'm going to copy paste or just click on it both the same but it says resource not found 404 the reason it is 404 because like we know when it created the container by itself it created as a private we need to have either the sas token or make this container product i mean the product container into the anonymous access so because the product image anyone can see when we visit our uh, e-commerce application right so we don't need to restrict this image so all what we have to do is we just have to wait to see the moment we enable this as uh, you know then it becomes public and then the url is accessible to anyone so that's how you do it and we saw how we uploaded an image using our dotnet core web api 8 and we also use the storage sdk to upload the image and it is pretty simple and we integrated into the e-commerce application i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video subscribe to my channel share this with your friends and provide your comments in the comment section and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!